first sketch uh, that I made it brings back uh, a kind of an interesting memory because uh, it was uh, based uh, not on the eye, but uh, uh, the sound I experienced when I was age 12. I built this uh, modest uh, treehouse, which was my sanctuary during the wartime because uh, we were in an internment camp. This one evening uh, in the treehouse, uh, I heard this, this wind. It was a kind of a half wind, half breeze, and it was really an eerie uh, sound going through the leaves and the, the trees, and, but at the same time, very comforting. And lying there in the treehouse, I was imagining that I'm a soldier, you know. And this is the evening after a real fierce battle. And, and I was feeling like lots of soldiers, you know. Feeling fear and hope that, that this whole thing would go away. But I'm admiring the sound. So the sound of uh, that experience is what I uh, drew. It may have been poetic irony or fate that had a hand in entrusting Raymond Moriyama with the noble responsibility of searching for the soul of a new Canadian war museum. One of Canada's most acclaimed architects, he is famous for his subtle and graceful designs. The mastermind behind such architectural works of art as the Ontario Science Centre, the Bata Shoe Museum, the Saudi Arabian National Museum in Riyadh, and the Canadian Embassy in Tokyo. But this building may well be remembered as his crowning architectural jewel. His cathartic journey into destruction, suffering, healing, and hope challenges all of our perceptions of war and our military past. I guess I tend to uh, judge other nations or any nation by three things. You know, one is the arts, second is civility, and third is deeds. And the War Museum is about uh, the deeds of Canadian. So to have a War Museum is a reminder to people that the world wasn't always the way they think it is now. It's a reminder that once upon a time, Canadians thought that their values were worth defending. It's a reminder that history matters. It's a reminder that we live in peace and freedom because people were willing to put their lives on the line to make sure we could continue to do that. War is an awful thing. We know it's awful. There are glorious things that occur, but it isn't the glorification of war that interests us. What is important is to put military history into uh, a footing and a context so that we can understand the country, how society has shaped itself, how immigrants have come, but also how Canada has participated in the wider world. I felt very deeply that the Canadians I know and uh, respect are, are strong, but they're modest. And I'm paraphrasing Jack Granistein, who said ordinary Canadians doing extraordinary deeds in extraordinary time. So that started to set the tone to 